Hello everybody. We're going to take you today on a trip through the El Paso Museum of Archaeology. It's going to have uh, indigenous plants of the Chihuahuan Desert. I'm going to take you through some nature trails and show you some of the indigenous plants that are here. And we're going to go ahead and try to do this before this big huge rainstorm shows up. This is the mountains. See how quickly the clouds are coming by. I waited one big huge storm out already, so we're going to try to do this really quickly and I'll uh, meet you on the trail. snakes. Hey everybody, this one is called a coyote melon. We, we actually call these just gourds. And they get about, this, about the size of a softball. The plants are usually very large. They kind of look like a watermelon. Both the melon itself and the plant itself. And these are usually very plentiful at the this beginning of summer. This is a barrel cactus. Um, the yellow parts on top will sometimes turn red. And they are edible. I've never eaten them, but supposedly they are edible. These, I believe, are called Texas rainbows because of the way that the, ca the cactus arcs. And some people call them the little cowboys because if you look at this one right here, it kind of looks like a little cowboy on a horse. This is the Mormon tree. These have a lot of the little insects uh, called walking sticks on them, usually all summer long. And you can't really tell, but they do get very, very long. Um, just in reference, one of these prawns is very long. That's probably about 9, 10 inches long. Here's some more Texas rainbows. Those are really small. And then you see in the back, you see this long, this long vine. That is some kind of an ivy and it really stinks. And it secretes a milky substance. Not really sure what it is. I'll try to find it for you later on and tell you what it is. This is the sand sage. Right now it smells really great because when the rain hits these, you smell it and it smells like uh, the sage you use for Thanksgiving. Uh, normally these bushes can get to be about six or seven feet wide and probably about four or five feet tall. This is western soapberry. Um, Normally these leaves are green and this one shows some green leaves on them and you can see the uh, cactus in the background. We'll talk about those in just a few moments. But those are called chote and you can make rain sticks out of them. Maybe we'll do that sometime here in the, in the nice future. little purple cactus and I'll go around to see that but I want to show you a large, a large version of that. And these are all what are called prickly pears. Eagle claws because of the, the spines. If you can see the spine, um, they come out like a three um, with two in front and one in the back. And those also flower. Okay. There are the large purple prickly pears. Normally around those is where you find rattlesnakes. I don't know why they like those. They're called particularly to violets. And Th that one has really nice spines. Those um, do kind of have a barb on the end and once you get them in you do have to kind of work to get willows. them out. These, you can see these everywhere out here in the desert. Um, and you can actually eat these beans. I tried them once. I didn't like the way it tasted. Um, I thought it tasted like dirt basically honestly. Warning, rattlesnakes. Okay, and it's too cold for them out right now, but I'm still going to kind of be very careful. <laughs> this is a little leek sumac. This smells really great right now because of the rain. And this, believe it or not, is one plant. This huge, big bush is all one plant. A large barrel cactus. And those, I believe, back there are called rainbow cactus. The reason they're called rainbow cactus is that they're green, and you can kind of see the stripes on them. I'm going to kind of cross the gate. You can see the stripes on them. They do have little bands of red on them, and they do also have the red spines on the very top. More rainbow cactus. This one shows a little bit more definition. Hopefully you guys can see that. 
it's so cloudy out I can't really tell through my view clip finder what's working and what is not here is one of those desert fingers with the actual seeds attached you can see they look like little grapes and what happens is these turn into little white balls and then they dry out and split open and all the seeds are released through that way bush. Um, if you guys are ever out into the woods or the desert and you're being bothered by mosquitoes and flies the Indians used to burn this on their fire and it creates a lot of smoke and it's like giving yourself a bath it'll take your odor away from your body and these things smell so great this has a little fuzzy berries on them basically the seeds and they are very pungent you can smell it right now especially from the rain it's kind of a sweet um, a sweet smell with kind of a little a little bit of an after smell going on behind okay you. this is an actual yucca you can see the difference it looks like hair and this is called a soap tree yucca because you can take the barks out and inside there's like a pulp and you can grind that pulp and it will actually foam and make soap it will be able to clean everything but you can see the difference this one already has the pods opening you can see the pods and this thing is about 12 feet tall from the base to the very tip of the tops and let's see these you can tell they have the thicker more grape like vines than the other ones that I showed you earlier this is a Mexican elder these are really great trees um, they do have little beads here that attract bees but they smell really great when it's when it's wet like it is now and I didn't see it earlier when I passed so I want to go ahead and add it in. Okay, everyone, here's one honey mesquite that I want to show you also. This one has beans that you can eat. And these beans actually do taste just like sugar. Um, I don't see any beans on this one. Um, this is a little bit different than the ones that we saw earlier that stay as bushes. This actually turns into a tree. The one thing that is bad about these trees, if you have them in your yard, they do leak a black sap. And I don't see any on this tree but the sap is so hard to get off of anything it will go onto concrete and it will stain the concrete and you can take it off but this is one of the better trees you want to have if when desert landscaping if you get the center it's going to branch out into several places you would have to learn which ones you wanted to trim to make it grow taller otherwise it's going to grow out more flat but this is one of the greater trees that you guys can get from here. This is the Mexican elder. Uh, it'll pretty much grow anywhere. And I think you guys would enjoy them if you do plan on replanting anything soon into the desert landscape. This should be the last of my video. Okay, everyone. Um, I'm back at the house now. And um, it is a little dark and ominous. You can look at the clouds. I don't know if you can really tell how bad it is. Um, but I want to include my, um, my elderberry trees. Uh, someone said they had never seen an elderberry tree. This is the one that is non-fruit bearing. And as you can tell, it's turning yellow and green um, at the moment. But the fruit bearing one is really, really turning yellow. And I, I don't know if you can see it from the uh, darkness. But, you know, fall has come here in this desert. Um, my rose bushes, which... Oh, but dead now. Uh, this is a tree that does bear fruit. And you can kind of tell that it's turning yellow. Uh, it's a little dark to do this right now. I know. I apologize for that. But I had to come and fight the uh, rain to get home. Um, and this will be the last entry for my video tour of our plants. And although the, uh, the um, bushes are not, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the trees are not indigenous, to the El Paso area we do have a lot of them and I want to show you my own little bushes that are growing in my backyard and we saw these earlier over at the archaeological museum these are Spanish fingers you can see the nice rain clouds coming in the background and there is a desert willow that you really can't see 
but I'm trying to include it anyway. This is what happens with one tree that does not get cut. The top of this one has been broken down several times and it is about 18 feet tall. And that's going to conclude our plants of the desert where I live, another desert finger, and another fruit bearing mulberry tree. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm signing off. Talk to you later.